For years, advertisers have been finding various ways to feature women in ads in order to entice buyers. But has the, the way women portrayed in advertising changed? Is the change radical? Is the change enough? And in turn, has, the change, has this changed the way society looks at women? Hansa Research conducted a survey recently with media professionals and senior media professionals with very in-depth interviews in order uh, to see if there is a trend of change in the portrayal of women in Indian advertising, the findings of which we're gonna showcase very shortly. We also have amongst us very eminent professionals from senior I mean, eminent professionals from advertising industry, from, ad, from advertisers, um, representations from NGOs. We have a psychologist. That would be an interesting view to see how that, you know, what, what's, what is brewing in people's mind. All of them are going to lend their views towards their discussion today. So whether have women have today changed um, and have they come out of their closet? Do they shoulder equal responsibilities? How have their real roles changed and how have their real roles changed? Do ads echo social changes? Has there been an influx of progressive advertising? Have they caused an impact? So many questions. Do we have those answers? We'll soon find out. So, you know, someone has really rightly said that you can tell the ideals of the nation by its advertising. And that, I think, is a very strong statement to say that what goes out there is so important. Because like Jim Morrison has said, whoever controls the media controls the mind. So without much ado, I'd like to welcome all of you for a, hopefully a very enlightening seminar where all of you can go away with something constructive, uh, which talks about the changing trends in portrayal of Indian advertising. Before we start the proceedings, I would like to first invite on stage uh, Mr. S. Sundaran Sun Srinivas Swami. I always do this. Uh, who is the president of IAA and the vice president, Development Asia Pacific, and chairman and manage, managing director of RK Swami and Hansa Group. Mr. Swami. Okay, just for benefit of others, my name is Srinivasan Swami. I'm also called Sundar Swami. Just in case Monica didn't get it right, I want to make sure that she gets it again right. Uh, no problem. Uh, friends, uh, this evening, or this afternoon, wouldn't have been possible, but for three outstanding people. The chairman, Monica Tata. Chairwoman. Chairperson, if you like. <laughs> You know, it's now it's used interchangeably. Monica Tata, co-chair, Vishaka Singh, and the chief mentor, Ramesh Narayan. They actually worked very hard to put this event together. On the back of a very successful seminar, we had a little more than a year ago, where we looked at gender sensitization as an issue. When we planned the gender sensitization seminar, in February last year, Nirbhaya was not in the horizon. It happened much after we planned it. And since Nirbhaya had happened, our focus got slightly shifted from normally synthesizing, synthesizing people about how to represent women in various content, be it print, television, cinema, whatever. We wanted to also tell them that, you know, good representation alone is not adequate. We need to actually, uh, you know, make them feel more important in the way they communicated. And I think we did well uh, at the seminar. We had uh, about 15 different speakers from agencies and media, uh, both television and print, uh, sorry, television and uh, uh, film. And uh, I think what we did then hopefully had had some impact. When Ramesh moved this idea this year about developing on a hunch that we had. Hey, I think the portrayal of women in advertising has considerably changed the last year and a half or so. Why not we look at it closely? 
And we wanted to just not go and talk to some random people. We wanted to talk to people who were engaged in the business of advertising and marketing. And therefore, we spoke to senior creative people across three centers, Bombay, Delhi, and Chennai. We want to also include Chennai because Chennai is supposed to be more conservative in its outlook. We want to make sure that what we get there is not very different from what we get in Bombay and Delhi. As well as, you know, talk to auditors at, uh, and, and auditors agencies in these three markets. I'm not going to, going to get into the results as such because Srini Raman is going to talk about that in a little while. But I can tell you that the hunch that we had, the empirical stuff, stuff that you want to actually check out, it's kind of playing out the way we thought it would play out. And I think more of that from uh, Srini. Uh, this uh, meeting would, uh, wouldn't have been possible, but for three important people in this room. Rajat Ray of UNFPA, Dr. Sharda of Ladli, and Colin Harris of Advertising Stands Council of India. Advertising Council of India, sorry. Uh, these three people not only supported our initiative by AA, they also wrote a check, which made this even possible. Uh, <laughs> You know, if IA, if you think, has done only these two uh, feel-good stuff, two seminars, the last seminar last year, and seminar this year, I think it would be kind of understating what IA has been doing in this area. Not far ago, uh, there was this Lighting a Billion Lives uh, campaign that we did, where in collaboration with Cherry, we gave away solar lamps to uh, millions of people in rural India uh, to light up their homes. Uh, I think it also improved enormously to improving the education of women and child at the time. Uh, you know, for the last four years, we've been having this Olive Crown Award. I think first time where we recognize awards for products that are eco-friendly. It's been a great initiative. It's been welcomed by every person in the industry, and it's uh, it's only success year after year. Uh, early this year, when uh, we discovered to our dismay that Mumbai is, Mumbai cars don't go out and vote, particularly from uh, you know, um, high-end areas. We, should, we decided to embark on a campaign, which I believe did well, because it's more interactive campaign, where uh, the high and mighty are used to. And we felt that we had a little to do with a higher turnout uh, in Bombay elections. So uh, it's not just what is good for Society is good for business. It's also so many things that we do that's good for the industry as well. Uh, I want to run a film, it's a four minute long film on IAA, uh, which has been put together for you especially today. Thank you. The International Advertising Association is a worldwide network of the most inspirational marketing and advertising professionals that guides and maintains the standards in the industry. IAA, which celebrated its Platinum Jubilee last year, has grown into a recognized force in the marketing and communications industry, represented in 76 countries around the world. India chapter of IAA has entered its Silver Jubilee year. In the last few years, a team of industry stalwarts have propelled IAA India towards several new milestones. For instance, IAA announced its first ever IAA Leadership Awards to honor individuals in the fields of marketing, advertising and the media. All senior people from the industry look to attending this grand event. The IAA Olive Crown Awards, the country's first and only awards celebrating green advertising and creativity in communicating sustainability are presented annually. The entire advertising industry enthusiastically took part in it. Another interesting initiative is IAA Debates, where senior industry professionals come together to debate perspectives on a given business issue. These debates have been held in all major cities across India. IAA 
uses the power of the internet by conducting many webinars under the theme The World Goes Digital. This series is aimed at connecting professional marketers and agencies with trends, strategies and success stories so that many others can learn to exploit this important medium. In a first of its kind, IAA conducts industry-specific events. Three seminars on marketing of real estate have seen a galaxy of Indian and international speakers covering various aspects of marketing and the use of digital medium and suggest ways to leverage these to the advantage of the reality sector. IAA Curious Digi Yatra in Goa over the last two years saw over 1200 delegates and an impressive lineup of illustrious speakers demonstrating how vital changes on the communication platforms can be brought about through the digital medium. IAA Conversations is a series where two or more acknowledged experts engage in an animated discussion on subjects relating to marketing or media, much to the delight of the invited audience. IAA Young Turks Forum and the IAA Mentorship Program are to get young professionals to enhance their professional capability and get ready for bigger roles in the industry. IAA India celebrated IAA's 75th anniversary with IAA Global Marketing Summit. Renowned speakers from USA, Europe and India delighted the 200 odd delegates on the overall theme of how to future-proof your brands. The highlight of this event was the high-profile chief guest, the then BJP Prime Ministerial candidate, Sri Narendra Modi, who regaled the audience on his vision for Brand India. IAA also supports many public causes. For instance, it launched a campaign to overcome voter apathy among the top echelons of our society during the last general elections. IAA Gender Sensitization Seminar focused against violence on women, VOW. Several well-known names brought their relevant insight towards the nuances involved in women-related communication and how not to typify representation of women in media. IAA India today is seen as amongst the most vibrant chapters in the globe as evident by the Best Chapter Award it received two times in a row in 2010 and 2014 and also amongst the foremost industry body in India. In its Silver Jubilee year, IAA India rededicates itself to the cause of advertising and looks to industry's full support in its journey to be more relevant and purposeful. Round of applause for IAA. Uh, the reason I asked you to stay back, sir, was that we have in our midst a very special person, an advertising veteran who ran a very professional and successful agency, someone who started a great NGO called Population First and addressed rural needs. And later he set up and nurtured the Ladley brand and has gone, done so much for the cause of the girl child in India. Uh, his links with the advertising industry have helped forge alliances between the NGOs and the advertising industry. Yes, I am referring to Mr. Bobby Sister. May I request Mr. Sister to please come on stage? And uh, can we have the memento for Mr. Sister? And sir, can you give him the memento? Thank you, sir. Uh, I'll call you back again in a minute, but uh, thank you, Mr. Sister. Uh, I'd like to invite, invite Mr. Colvin Harris, who's the CEO, CEO GWT South Asia and ex-president of 3 years of I and representing the ACI. So may I request Mr. Harris? Hi, everyone. Sundar, I can be your branding uh, consultant not difficult. You've got three elements of your name which need to be uh, managed a little better for a small fee, and I can make that what you pay me as a donation to this cause. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, I was just introduced by Anjali Raina, who's here, who, uh, and I was introduced like that. This is Colvin Deepa Harris's uh, husband. So that's another new one. So, so times are changing. Earlier it was the other way around. But uh, on a more serious note, uh, Mr. Swami, uh, Dr. Sharda, uh, Rajit uh, uh, Ray, who I've known virtually all my life, and fellow professionals, many of you are, who I keep seeing, so we're all friends. And of course, Ramesh, I would be not doing my duty if I don't say that when I said, can you brief me? And when he sent the brief, I couldn't make any changes. So, so we just uh, promoted him while we were talking. We said he is fantastic, then he became brilliant, and now he's even beaten Sam. Hi, Sam. <laughs> so uh, thanks, uh, Ramesh. I know that you tirelessly help all these causes. And I must say a little bit on Sundar himself because uh, or Mr. Swami or Mr. Srinivas Swami all in one, that if it wasn't for him, the IAA had no relevance for me either. And he kept saying, he never actually kept saying, the first time he said, Colvin, I'm going to run it now, send me a check, and I did. So at some point, uh, Sundar, I owe that to you. So the Advertising Council of India, I'm just going to give you some explanation as to how all these bodies function, and I've never had it so clear, so I must share it. The Advertising Council of India, which is the ACI, is an umbrella institution whose members are the Advertising Agencies Association of India, what we call the three A's of I. Indian Broadcasters Federation, the IBF, the International Advertising Association, IAA, the Indian Society of Advertisers, the ISA, and the Advertising Club. Uh, there is an award if anybody can explain that at the end. All these associations have come together to represent the entire communication industry in the country under the banner of ACI. And we've held things like the, the Ad Asia. Uh, of course, uh, Ad Asia, as you know, is one of our premier, uh, uh, you know, uh, what should I say? It's, it's a celebration of advertising. We get great speakers. And if you've ever attended an Ad Asia, you'll understand how good it can be, how good it is. And I think what India does every time when we hold it, it just becomes uh, so superlative that I think uh, in the entire region, when they're wishing for an ad Asia, they're wishing it's in India. Because whether it was Jaipur or in Delhi, we really do it the way Indian, India can do it. Uh, and the last one was held in 2011. The ACI has also been supporting the Asian Federation of Advertising Associations, the AFA, AFAA in its fast track program based in Malaysia, where we send about six young professionals for, for an all expenses, and that's a good thing because you are actually picking up young people who are uh, deserving and worthy to be uh, sent abroad and get training, which will actually open their minds. And that happens every year. Apart from this, uh, I mean, I don't think we do enough. I think we could do a lot more. Uh, I'm therefore delighted that the ACI has stepped up to support this important initiative. And you, you should know that in, in, in my profession, we go through this every day, the issues which we face. And uh, I think, by and large, uh, uh, you know, we understand that what's good is great, but we are not always able to keep it because you'll always have a maverick who will do something which is untoward, and therefore, you know, everybody gets uh, uh, a name which, or uh, let's say a bad name. An initiative like this is not just important for all of us, it also shows that we as an industry are listening to what people are saying about us and that we care about doing what is right. And I, I think in any business, if you just follow that as a cardinal principle, just do what's right, you never go wrong. And it's no rocket science. If it sounds right to you and if you could probably discuss it in a family, then it's probably right and good to go. Um, it also positions us uh, as people, and that's the fraternity and the advertising community, that uh, um, we, um, you know, uh, that what is important is that we are thinking, and we, we, aren't, we aren't as bad as sometimes we are projected as. So I think these are small things, but just do the right thing. Uh, I'm sure the finding of this market research, which will be released now, will uh, provide invaluable pointers that we can all learn from. I'm also sure the marketers, advertising professionals, and others who will speak today will provide important insights that we can learn from and use in our professional lives. 
As a career advertising person myself, let me assure you, this audience that gender equality is something that I personally believe in and professionally espouse very strongly. As a company in J. Walter Thompson, we believe in this and we ensure that even at our senior leadership levels, we have fair representation. Just so you understand, at our most senior levels, we are 50-50, exactly half. And we believe in one thing, that th there is only actually one sex in the company, which is colleagues, and merit gets you there. So if you're great, you get to the top. If you're not, you don't get it. So it's not about, uh, let's say there is no glass ceiling. Uh, it's a very transparent process. And at, at the 50-50 level, in our senior-most uh, leadership uh, positions, I think we couldn't have hoped for better. I must say, at the board level, and this is something I've uh, actually been, uh, have written about, if you look at company boards, not enough women. I don't think they even understand the concept, and that is something somebody should take up as an issue, because if you don't have a balance at a board level, you have a company which is actually you know, uh, approaching it incorrectly in the year 2014. So that's something we always discuss. The second is, why do women board members need training and grooming when men don't? So what's this about? And if you really look at the, uh, the uh, if you look at, when you, when you and I, I, I say this, if, if you have uh, um, women, or let's say our, our colleagues, you give them a role, it's always been delivered. So I think these are issues which, as society, we need to deal with. Uh, safety is another area, and I know it's up in the news. Uh, we, we have a very simple rule, whether it's, it's, it's true for men or women. If they're drinking, they can come back to the office, and they can uh, request a car. A car will take them home. We worry about who pays and who funds it subsequently. At that point of time, we want safety. So just come to the office wherever you may be, and you will get a car to take you home, chaperoned with security. So that's the way we've always approached it. So I don't want to say anything more. I think this is a great uh, opportunity. I think media plays a great role. What you read, perception, does become reality over time. I think uh, Amir Khan has said something very good in today's paper is that if there's an issue, let justice prevail quickly. And every day it happens. I don't think the solution is to stop Uber or to stop uh, uh, the railways or to stop, uh, you know, uh, uh, best. It's not about that. It's about going to the root of the and getting people to think differently. So thank you very much. Thank you, uh, uh, Sundar. Uh, we shall speak uh, separately. I'm sure I'm feeling richer, and I'm sure as an association we'll get some more money. Sam, please take notes. Thank you. <laughs> Mr. Swami, can I request you back on the stage to hand over a token of appreciation to Mr. Harris? <laughs> well, let's get on to what we are all waiting to hear, the findings of the study conducted by Hansa Research. And I'd, I'm delighted to invite on stage Srinivasan so, uh, Raman. Srinivasan Raman, who's the executive director of Hansa Research. Mr. Raman. Before we find the, share the findings, we'd like to launch the book officially. For that, may I request Dr. Sharda, Mr. Ray, Ms. Gulati, Mr. Harris, Mr. Swami, please come on stage. I think both uh, Monica and Sheik, uh, Sundar made my task a little easier by setting the context, whether it's the sensitization program or it's the Nirvaya case. I think what this called for an introspection to see whether there is really a change in the way women are being portrayed in advertising. And that's how they approached Hansa Research to say, let's understand and let's see. So we decided that we stay with really understanding basically from a select set of audience, and I say select, I mean very senior professionals, 
these were, these were creative directors and above from advertising agencies, and these were marketing managers and above from the uh, advertising fraternity, uh, advertiser fraternity, to really understand what they see or how they view, uh, whether they see any change, first of all, in, in uh, women in the society, let alone advertising whether they see any change that has happened over the last few years, and thereafter, to see whether they are seeing any of the portrayal changes, and that's really what we were really doing. So what is the state of the women in the society, in the workplace, at her home, and is the portrayal of women in advertising seen any, any change? And are these changes you know, palpable, noticeable? Are there any flag bearers? And you'll see some of them are flag bearers. And what really is contributing to this change? And is this change sustainable? So this is really the context in which the research was conducted. So we met about close to 194 to be precise. These were one-on-one -on -one interviews. These were not telephonic interviews. These were face-to-face. -face. These were not web-based interviews. These were done by senior executives from Hansa Research who spent time with, like it says, creative directors and above and marketing managers and above. So we are talking about very senior people. In that sense, a very homogeneous set of people. Uh, albeit being homogeneous, we said, let's go to three markets. Let's go to Bombay, Delhi, and Chennai. As uh, Sundar mentioned, we thought Chennai may give us a conservative viewpoint relatively. We went to men and women, right? So both in these two fraternities, we went to men as well as women to see whether there's any difference between them. And we looked at the any differences between the marketing professional and the advertising professional. Some changes, uh, wherever they're relevant, have been mentioned. Geographically, you know, wherever it's relevant, I don't think we saw any changes, uh, any differences in geography. And a few changes or a few differences that we noticed in gender that has been pointed out in the, in the latter part of the presentation. So if you look at the four blue figures there, sorry. These are negative statements, basically, about, you know, women losing sense of culture or women's work uh, is, you know, house, housekeeping women's work. And you'll find very low uh, agreement. This is done on a five-point scale. So these are top two box scores, basically on a five-point scale. So strongly agree, strongly disagree, top two box scores. Uh, somewhat agree. And uh, the negative, negative le level is the, the do not agree at all. So if you look at women should give up their jobs you know, if family needs are more, uh, at least there's an agreement on these front, on these negative statements. That no, that not, that's not, should not be the case. And if you look at the sentences like, Women are shouldering equal response with men, 91%. Or, you know, men normally judge a woman. Now, that is the interesting point here. Men normally judge a woman on the basis of beauty and sex appeal. So, despite seeing a lot of, you know, changes, the uh, age-old thing about, you know, men judging a woman on the basis of sex appeal still continues to be prevalent. About 55% of our senior audiences agree with that statement. So do they, so do they with the statement of portrayal of women in, prov in provocative manner grabs the attention of both men and women. Of course, some of these were mentioned with a commercial viewpoint, that you know, f to promote the products, right, this seems to be working well for us, and therefore we, you know, we continue doing some of it. And both men and women you know, feel that this is true of advertising even as we go on to the next chapter. In the workplace, how is the status of women seen in the workplace? So if you look at women are now more highly ambitious and proven the metal, not only on the home front, but also in their respective professions, there's a lot of agreement there. So interesting is that there is perceptible change being noticed by the senior audience of women in the workplace as they see them today. So Indian women professionals do not see themselves as a disadvantage other than in terms of pay or other work related aspects. And if you look at them in society and home, are they seen to be home birds today? They're not. You know, they're shouldering equal responsibilities. They are at the forefront of, you know, uh, taking decisions at home, right? So interestingly, our audience tends to agree with most of the portrayal that uh, really, uh, really the way they are being seen at home today in their work, in the, in the way they behave in society. Getting married is more of a social, social necessity for a woman when you compare to men. No, that's not necessarily the case. So there's an equal divide there. So there are some places, two sides of the same coin. But as we go down the negative statements, you'll find that you know, today's women are losing a sense of their culture and tradition and are becoming uh, way too modern. No, that's not the case. That's not the way they feel, believe. We then spend time in understanding, OK, if this is what you think of women today as they stand within the workplace or at home or society, 
Do you think this is adequately getting represented in, in, in the way they portrayed in advertising? If you look at the way uh, the, some of the statements there, you know, they seem to be portrayed as energetic, multitaskers. So in that sense, it's no more synonymous with, the, with being merely homely, right? The stereotypical woman of being homely, uh, you know, provide, is a provider, etc. That's seen a change. Uh, they, they seem to be, you know, fairly independent, uh, being not necessarily provocative in, uh, in, in the way they were portrayed earlier. So advertising is seeing some change is what the, the professionals tend to believe. They strongly believe that the portrayal is more energetic and in positive light too. But is that in sync with the status that they see, they see in society today? So it's not entirely true. I mean, while they did mention that there are some changes that we're noticing, there are some flag bearers of advertising which has you know, made this change possible. We aren't seeing a sweeping change in the way they're being portrayed. You know, I think someone mentioned that, is there a, is there a wave? It's not a wave. Right? There are clearly certain flag bearers, uh, but ge in general, they seem to be being portrayed better in advertising than they uh, were in the past. So is there a, has there been a change? Uh, yes, they agree that there is a change. Uh, while it may not be entirely in sync with the way they see women today in, in, in society or in the workplace, but the change is there, the change is positive, right? And it's sustainable, is, is what this audience believes. And what are these changes? You know, some of the quotes are there for you to look, read. So there is a different characterization. There is a different innovative way of portraying them today. So it's not just gratification of women, you know, that we saw in, in the past. So with financial independence, decision making, uh, you know, that portrayal is becoming much more positive. And it is seen clearly for the better. And what they believe is driving this change, obviously one is financial independence, education to begin with, financial independence, the changing role uh, that she herself has realized, I mean the women themselves have realized that you know, they're not uh, the second half or the, you know, the worst half. Self-realization, as I said, emergence of women leaders as role models. So both in, in politics as well as in the industry side, there are enough women role models which are actually uh, reflecting or propagating this change. And how much is this sustainable? Clearly, with societal changes, with financial independence, uh, sustainability is seen to be uh, you know, on, on the cards. Uh, they, the fact that they're getting involved in decision making, the fact that they are participating much more in, the, in, in working professions, and at, even at senior levels, is really what is uh, be, being seen as sustainable. And where did the audience feel that these flag bearers are? These flag bearers basically clearly uh, where they have been reported positively. Uh, Airtel mentioned was a, was a very strong mention. So was Tanishq. Uh, I think you brought the comparison very well. Is it Tanishq darkness or is it fair and lovely darkness? Uh, so that's a clear difference that they spoke about. And the Bon Vita ad, the mother training, you know, the boxing ad. Uh, some of the quotes are there. You know, for you to see. Women having a dark complexion with a girl child getting remarried clearly got, got picked up and mentioned as a, as a very positive change. Getting widowed, divorce is not the end of life. The woman can start her life afresh on her own terms. So these are some of the spontaneous reactions that we got pertaining to some of these advertising. Again, where they've been seen as portrayed positively. Uh, Havel's ad. The Bharat Matrimony ad, the new Nirma ad, right? And in fact, people compared it with the old Nirma ad, you know, which was classical stereotype, typical woman. So you're really look, looking at, uh, they have clearly come out of the closet. Uh, and I think the senior professionals recognize that they have a role to play, both the advertisers and the, uh, the, the creative professionals. And they believe that flag bearers like, the, like Airtel, Bonvita, if they were to, you know, manifold increase, uh, this change will see, uh, you know, we'll see a rapid change in the way they're being portrayed. Some of them actually spoke about it being, and I think you mentioned that, uh, uh, you know, as being a part of the, uh, the culture, where there is a conscious uh, attempt within the advertising fraternity, even with the marketing fraternity, to ensure that, you know, every time they create an ad, to see that they, the portrayal is slightly, po is positive certainly, not somebody lying in the, the way back in, in advertising. She's in the front face of advertising. 
uh, depending on the product category, some of them mentioned that you know we do need to uh, we need to sell also. So some of the deodorant manufacturers did speak of the fact that we do need to show you know skin, but that sells, right? But we are slowly changing, right? So this is the kind of uh, sentiment that we picked up. Uh, we did see that statement where uh, you know men normally judge a woman that continues to exist, right? That's the way they see it today, but they believe that that is slowly changing. And that change, as we've seen, uh, most professionals, 80% of them believe that this has been a steadily growing change, awareness towards you know, women as being equal. And we saw earlier education, financial independence, uh, that she participates and is allowed to participate in decision making, both at the home front and at the working front, is the, is the you know, key contributor to this uh, changing portrayal. And to summarize the three flag bearers, there were many more mentioned, but these were, you know, these were something that almost every professional spoke about. And while we're seeing this change, uh, there seems to be a lot more opportunity to explore. And I think this seminar is something that will explore you know, how else or what else could be done to see a positive portrayal change. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mr. Raman. I'm sure that has a lot of insights for us to ponder upon in the day, uh, the rest of the day when we have some more conversations and discussions and some debates, hopefully. Um, before we move forward, I just want to make an announcement. One, if you're a twi tweeters, then please tweet uh, with hashtag SheInAds um, and spread the word of uh, IAA initiative. And um, there's another announcement that there's a special screening of Daughters of Mother India, a film by Oscar-nominated director Vibha Bakshi at Tata Theatre on Tuesday, 16th of December at 7 p.m. So if anyone's interested, please give your names and your email IDs to our executive secretary, Mr. Sauman, who will be right outside at the pre-function area, and we'll pass on your details to Vogue Empower, who have been kind enough to give us some free invites. So once again, it's Daughters of Mother India, a film by Vibha Bhakshi. All right, so we'll move on and our first um, speaker, we'd like to, first I'd like to invite uh, Mr. Manish Advani, who is the head of marketing and public relations, Mahindra and Mahindra Group Company, to introduce our first speaker, Dr. A.L. Sharda. So thank you, Monica. Uh, when I received the invitation uh, and when I saw this picture, what all women can do, I said, I must be here. And this is something, you know, one picture, I mean, it says it all, what all women can do. This talks about women power. I don't think any men in this room can do all of these things. <laughs> uh, so it's an honor and privilege for me to introduce Dr. Um, A.L. Sharda. Uh, Dr. A.L. Sharda has done her doctorate in sociology from the Central University of Hyderabad in the field of sociology of occupations and professions. She has been active in the development sector for the last 25 years. She started her career as a faculty member in the Central University of Hyderabad. She was also on the faculty of Indian Institute of Health Management Research, known as IIHMR at Jaipur. She carried out many short-term consultancy assignments for UNICEF and UNFPA in Rajasthan, Gujarat, and Maharashtra. She has also conducted several programs for NGOs in UP and Rajasthan on various issues, such as rehabilitation of the mentally handicapped persons, mobile crashes for migrant construction workers, adolescent non-formal and innovative education initiatives, empowerment of women, and child labor, women's health. Dr. Sharda had conducted various training programs for personnel of international agencies, NGOs, and government departments on gender and RCH, as well as on communication planning. She has recently come on board of Campaign India magazine as gender expert. She reviews ads that come every fortnight and gives them gender scores. So without wasting further time, I would like to invite Dr. Sharda on stage. So it's very inspiring to you know, read your profiles. You're like one man, one woman army. 
It's reminding me of three important departments in uh, this research. Uh, some of the things I mentioned about Saraswati and Durga. So the three important departments, you know, some people call it LST. So Lakshmi, Saraswati, Durga. So represent uh, finance, home, and uh, education, without which not even a single man can survive. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, um, it's really uh, a privilege to be standing here and uh, uh, talking to all of you. Uh, I remember the last uh, IAA workshop we had almost one year back, and it was so inspiring. And we had all the top uh, um, heads, uh, creative directors of uh, uh, various organizations, and they spoke so candidly about uh, uh, where they are with regard to gender and portrayal of women in advertising. I said I never expected this from uh, advertising professionals and uh, I thought maybe they'll go on the defensive and say that you activists are always like this and you know it will become a kind of a negative interaction but it was so wonderful meeting everybody uh, and uh, from that uh, time onwards it has been my um, desire to see like uh, I felt that that was a really, uh, um, you know, um, uh, most landmark kind of an event because that's when most of the creative directors have shown their commitment to the issue of gender sensitivity and, sensitivity and equality. And I thought it will definitely reflect in the advertisements that they come, that have come after afterwards. And um, and yes, there have been so many ads which are really uh, uh, very, very uh, sensitive. And uh, I would just like to uh, focus on a few points and then we have made a small short film. I would like to show that. Uh, apart from these three or four films which are in the, you know, like which come to your mind the minute you say, oh, gender sensitive film, the Ma Bharat matrimony, Havels and other ads. What is very um, heartening for me as uh, somebody who's been seeing advertisements and uh, um, uh, following them up and the changes that are coming up is there is an ad which is uh, an anthem for one of the brands and it has women in Nawaz, you know, the nine yard saris driving the scooter on the road. There are ads which show women with disability achieving great heights. There are three or four ads which have come up. A woman amputee uh, scaling a mountain. Then there is a woman amputee getting an award uh, in a, a talent competition. So whether it is disability, whether it is age, we have beautiful ads showing women driving cars, going out, enjoying themselves you know it is some it is i don't think 10 years back we would have thought of showing two elderly women driving a car and going to a mall i think it would have been really very difficult to even uh, conceptualize today we have ads which show senior citizens i mean elderly women going and uh, enjoying themselves you have on one side the titan ad where the girl is all the time pleading with the man to give her attention. But then you have the other ID, same brand, titan, which shows the girl uh, going out with her mother when husband says, or husband, boyfriend says that I cannot come back. They both go out nicely for a long drive with both of them singing and dancing and listening to music. So this is a different kind of a, a portrayal of women, which is not just, uh, uh, you know, uh, talking about uh, women, but now we also have so many ads which are showing women as bosses. Okay, the the ad is quite controversial, I don't want to go into that, but I feel that there's an attempt to push and show the girl as a boss, but then somewhere you must have felt, oh, I don't want to sort of, you know, uh, ruffle too many feathers, so let her bring back home and make her do the, uh, you know, uh, a good uh, dinner for the husband and that to a Chinese dinner, a lavish spread. So, okay, there is some uh, courage shown, uh, but, you know, you retract. But at the same time, you have another boss at Titan, which shows the man, uh, like, you know, this the, the creator is totally confused because uh, the professional and personal is totally merged in that with the result he's making, you know, gestures to the boss who is a woman. So which is again a very sleazy kind of an ad, though they are showing a boss. But what I'm happy is, at least they're trying to show women as bosses, as women in positions uh, 
of uh, uh, power. That is something really nice. And in the last three, four uh, months, I think we have amazing ads showing men taking up roles of, uh, you know, uh, house, whether it is taking care of the children or the family. And it is done in a very natural fashion. That's what I like. It doesn't look contrived. For instance, the Raymond side being there, which is very good. The man uh, stays back at home to take care of the uh, sickly child when the woman goes out for work. And then we have another ad where the ma woman is out on uh, uh, official work in a remote village and the fa son keeps asking and then the you know, like he says, mother will come back and he's taking care of the child when the woman is out working. So the career aspirations of women and the role of men is being shown in a very natural and normal fashion. I'm sure there are many young uh, men in advertising professions who want to see themselves in the ads. And I think that is the reason why there are so many positive male ads. And that is also something which we really feel, uh, uh, I feel happy about. And I would like to say that this is not just a phenomenon of urban areas, because even in my rural areas, uh, I see that the first thing that a woman actually negotiates for when she has any kind of independence is man's participation in household work. I have uh, organized a workshop in, in the city and one girl came with a blue, uh, black eye and then I asked her what happened and she said that I, my husband beat me up because I asked him to take care of the child. He said, you take the child with you. I won't take care of her and she negotiated with him to see that he keeps the child when she comes and when I asked her, why did you not bring, because the training program was happening at my place, I said, why did you not bring? She said, ma'am, I'm working, and he's not working, and he's at home. I think he should take care of the child. So that is the thing. That it's not just an urban phenomena that women want freedom, women want education, women want to be go out or anything. It's nice to see advertisements showing women going out, going, uh, being on the streets, exploring the nights, all those patriarchal things which deny a woman a right to go out in the night, a right to go out in the dark, etc., being defied or being recast in the advertisements. And I, in that larger perspective, I see that it is really, really uh, a reflection of the aspirational India. And I would just like to show one short film that uh, we have made. Hi, can I have a laundry, please? Coming right up. One of those cl classic uh, ads, you know, it's, a, it's for a male product, so women will get attracted to you. So in terms of gender sensitivity, I mean, if you look at it uh, subjectively, uh, it is not gender sensitive because you're showing women as uh, objects getting attracted to the man. But if you look at it a little bit of, uh, in an uh, you know, objective way, the product is about attracting women. I don't think the ad is anything to do with the product right now. They're just showing women going after a man. In that sense, I don't think it's sensitive. Uh, where gender sensitivity is concerned. Three. बेटा तुम रोज सुधा के घर आने से पहले खाना खा लेते हो? नहीं नहीं, वैसे तो रोज साथ ही खाते हैं। आज काम में अटक गई होगी। अच्छा एक बात बताओ। जी। प्रमोशन के बाद तुम्हारी सैलरी से घर आराम से चल जाता होगा। तो फिर सुधा को काम करने की जरूरत क्या है? पापा सुधा घर चलाने के लिए काम नहीं करती उसे अच्छा लगता है इसलिए करती है हम उनसे मिलाते हैं जो आपको समझ पाते हैं भारत मैट्रिमोनी भारत मैट्रिमोनी एड इज सिंपली लवली it makes a central point about everybody having a choice. 
and it doesn't push too much one way or the other. I like moderation. And at the same time, I'm against the ch uh, women not having an option. I like it because it's balanced. It says that the woman has the option. Her husband is understanding. He says she wants to work, so she can work. So it's a great act. Nine on ten. It's the roof that I trade. It's a six! But the smooth gets me there. Kiddo. Boss. Get serious. Boss killing, I'm always serious. I said, ooh, I'm a prisoner. Tries desperately to show that the woman is the boss. She may be the boss in the office, but for all practical purposes, she's still in servitude to him as a sex object, so it's not at all a gender-sensitive ad. In fact, it completely reinforces the stereotypes, even though it pretends to show that the woman is the boss in the workplace. Score two. Ah, so soft, Italy. No chutney? <laughs> अम्मा याद आ गया अम्मा होता तो मिनिमम थ्री टाइप्स चटनी मिलता पर वाले? हाँ। नारियल अनियन पुदीना धनिया ट्वेंटी फाइव टाइप्स ऑफ चटनी बनाओ चटनी पत्नी हैवेल्स टू मी आई थिंक इज वन ऑफ दो बेस्ट एग्जाम्पल्स ऑफ uh, gender sensitivity handled in an advertising. I mean, it very clearly puts focus on the woman to put her foot down. She is not demure, demure and shy, and, and you know this whole thing about that is chutney and this is patni and you know I am not a machine. Uh, every time they have done, and the good thing about it is it's completely about the product. It is not some indulgent act. So to me, I really genuinely rate that entire campaign as um, something that uh, puts a new focus on uh, progress for women. You know, you equip people, people. You equip women when you do advertising like this. Uh, to put your foot down and say, no, this is as much as I will do. So on a scale of 1 to 10, I would give it an 8 or 9. Hey. Hey. Wow. That's beautiful, yeah. Oh, come on. <laughs> Spoiled sport. What must I do to get your undivided attention? Take me inside. <laughs> I'm serious. Are you? We spend time with time. Then what is this? Is you spending time with your phone. Are you giving this gift? If I give you a time gift, will you spend it with me? What? Yes or no? Come on, yeah. They show the woman very vulnerable, dependent on the man, craving for his attention. The equation between them also uh, somehow uh, doesn't come out very positively. It is a kind of a sticky, clinging type of a attention seeker, you know, that comes to our mind when we watch the uh, women in the film. And I don't think that is the right way of uh, portraying the relationship between two mature, uh, adults um, in a very healthy relationship. So I think uh, it's not a very sensitive ad. Hey, hey man. Hi. Hey, hi. Nice to see you. Mm -hmm. How are you? Wow. <laughs> Lovely earrings. Thanks. Look, Varun, stunning, na? अरे भाई इनके पतिदेव ठहरे इन्वेस्टमेंट बैंकर इनके लिए डायमंड इयरिंग्स क्या चीज है अबे साले छह महीने से घर पे बैठा हूँ बुक लिख रहा हूँ नो इनकम लॉयर मैडम घर चला रही हैं अहा सो यू आर द मैन ऑफ द हाउस हाँ इवन बेटर आई एम द वूमन ऑफ द हाउस आई थिंक आई वॉक्ड टू इट अगेन दे आर ट्राइंग � I think they must, must have realized that in the world outside, women are working and they are the ones who are making the choices about buying the diamonds. So that's good. She says, well, 
he explains that no, I've been out of work and I've been writing a novel, so I haven't been earning. And she is the one who's bought the earrings, so she is the agent. So she's a working woman, which is good. Six. What I liked about the PC Jewelers ad was the husband was really support was really open and frank about how the household has been run by his wife. It's brilliantly done, first of all, that you know it's subtly put that the wife is caring for the husband where she makes the breakfast for him and stuff like that. And the husband's being just an idiot and like you know doesn't doesn't respect the fact that he's being taken care of and she cares for him. So her choice and she's working apart from uh, just managing even the household work, so that's absolutely fine. A kind of scale of one to five would rate as three. I don't think so that anyone will do such thing, so I didn't like that much. Regarding this Titan ad, uh, I did not like it at all because in the first place uh, he's acting very snobbish with his own wife. He's in the commanding position where instead of the boss, it's just demeaning because I think today's women are much more career oriented than men are and they are in the field where they are constantly competing with men and they're really doing a great job nowadays. So it's just stupid right now to portray a woman in such a negative light and I don't like that much. It I feel like, you know, even when we are at Largely and when we are doing, you know, kind of talking, I feel that uh, it does not come as a second nature to um, to us unless it's, you know, it's on the agenda. So, like, we put mandatories on the brief that it should be 30 seconder, it should be uh, only shot in India. These are mandatories. Maybe, a, a, you know, a line which is say, Ki, please evaluate for gender sensitivity as well when you create. Uh, if the leaders in the in 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 the, in the advertising business are told that, so if I'm leading a team of creative people, I should constantly think about it when someone brings something. Basically, because um, advertising is so impactful, we all in this business have to think about our responsibility. Actually, we don't realize we just do a job and go home. This is one of the ways to do it. In advertising, you make the man look at the girl with respect. You look at the, let the girl respect herself. Certainly you can make ads which are gender neutral. In the sense that you are not objectifying either the male or the female. You are not making the male macho and you are not making the female into a sex object. You are not showing the woman in a position of servility. You're not showing the woman constantly bending, scraping in the house and so on. So there is quite a lot of scope. You're in the communication field. You can change the messages that you're giving. So it's not necessary if your target audience is a woman for a particular product. There's nothing wrong in focusing the woman. But how do you show the environment in which the woman is working can be changed without actually as, uh, looking very uh, what you call um, uh, revolutionary or boring or politically correct. So using your initiative, using your imagination, innovativeness, creativity, I think you can change the way India thinks and treats its women. And uh, so I have a uh, lot of uh, uh, confidence on the advertising profession and the change that it can bring about. And working together with uh, IAA and uh, ACI and uh, Advertising Standards Council and uh, AAA, I think we can surely make a big difference. Thanks so much. Thank you.